morning it is cold it is wet it is gray it's pretty blooming miserable but we're at chapman's over in twickenham and i've come here specifically to look for some broad bean seeds and i need autumn sowing ones so probably agrodolthy i've got plenty for uh spring sowing so that's the eleanor express that i'm going to be sowing in spring but i've run out of agrodolthy and i need to sow some more so stay away from the sale sign jesse <laughs> okie dokie right actually they've got more seeds here than i was expecting them to have but beans okay broad beans broad beans broad beans here's some broad beans barnyards exhibition now you see that is a february sowing one i need autumn sowing this one also february to april nah not good so all they've got just the two of them Hold your horses, boys and girls. What do I spot in the bottom there? We have Aguadolfi Claudia. However, there is possibly a little bit of an issue with the packet. Uh, I think it's been munched. Oh, well, we will see if they'll sell it to me anyway. There seems like there's still quite a lot of seeds in the packet. So and to be honest, I only need about 16. And I'm sure there's 16 in there. It says there's supposed to be 50. There's easily enough in there. Now, the other thing I want to get while I'm here is some treats for Lil. She is well stocked with food. Actually, amazingly, she's still eating the leftovers of Annie's food. Annie was super fussy with what he ate. And uh, so I had to bulk order it online. This is all dog treats. This is no good. Where's the cat section? <laughs> here we go. Right. What do we think? Sticks? I know she loves chewing on the sticks. But that one, I think we will go orange. Meaty sticks, Meaty sticks for Mrs. Lil. Like. It's a cold one today. It is proper chilly. Blue sky, but chilly. We've got some more broad beans to go in. Uh, we did sow some, but mum sowed uh, everything that we had left of the Aguadolthies and a couple of them will come up, which is great, um, but we want some more. So I had to go and buy another packet. As you saw, 
yesterday. Uh, it has got a big hole in it, but actually there's still quite a lot of beans in there and he gave it to us for a quid. So I'm quite happy with that. Should have been three. Excellent. Uh, talking of beans though, just noticed that the field beans have come up in the three beds that we put them in the other week. I've still got another couple of beds to put them in and I've got so much clearing to do. All the stuff like the outdoor aubergines, um, the arches, so all the beans over the arches, they're all ready to come down. Apart from the achocha, which still seems to be going strong for some reason. Uh, yeah, but lots of clearing, lots of mulching. It's that kind of time of year. And I also want to uh, recover the chicken house because, um, because the chicken house is made out of mesh where the tarpaulin that we have on there rubs over, you know, with wind onto the mesh. Uh, it just, these little tiny holes appear and uh, the rain is kind of getting through. Not totally, like it's still dry under there, but there's like plinkety plonkety bits under there. So we need to recover that. But I think I'm probably going to do that tomorrow. We're up here a bit late this afternoon and the sun has gone and it's freezing. So I'm just going to get these in. Let me show you the field beans anyway. Have a little gander at this. See all of those chaps all come up there looking good. Hey Florence, you're looking good, aren't they, field beans? Mm. Yeah, so there is that bed. So this bed is going to be half field beans. Then we've got the mustard greens and the chard in that end. So that bed's totally full, practically. This is the aubergines that I need to take out of the centre. Uh, that's sorrel at that end, so that just stays in. And then we've got some good winter lettuces going on down there. And behind the parsnips here is another bed of field beans. You can see they're all coming up. Little chaps all germinating. Fantastic. The leeks in there look absolutely terrible though. I don't know what's happened to them. I might have to take the box off and have a quick nosy at them. Anyway, my priority before we lose the last of this little bit of like sunshine and warmth is uh, get some more raw beans in. We're going to have to have a look what's going on at those leaks under that um, cover, Mum. Mum, where are you? Hello? She's completely vanished. Oh, there you are. <laughs> yes, I was just saying we're going to have to have a look at what's going on in those leaks. They're completely collapso. I don't know what's happened to them. Let's have a quick nose because they don't look great at all. I'm going to hide in here in the relative warmth. I say almost, it's about nine degrees in here at the moment, so it's pretty chilly. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to sow some ball beans. I'm actually really cold. And these are the ones that mum sowed. So you can see they are coming up. We've got a couple here. She put two in each pot. There's one here coming up, but I think we are definitely going to need more than that. So I'm going to go on with sow some more. So there is definite action because this is one of the pots that nothing has come up but look as I'm moving them around you can see there is things happening but we're going to need quite a lot so we're going to sow um how many tomatoes did I have outside this year I had it nine one two three four five, yeah I think there was nine and I'm going to plant two broad beans for each uh pole I'm just going to use the stump talking about tomatoes because I'm going to use that um, outdoor tomato cane system that I had uh, for the broad beans or for one set of broad beans so I need 18 to go up there and I think we've got about nine or so come up from mum if I'm looking at the base 
So I'll just fill up the rest of that tray, I think. I won't bother with numbers. You never work it out because you think, oh, I'll sew this many. If you sew over, like if you weigh over sew, thinking that you're gonna get it, then every single one of them comes up and you're inundated. And if you sew the exact number, about half will germinate. Whinge, 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 sorry. <laughs> it's the cold, it's getting to me. put one per pot in the ones that I'm sewing because as you saw before they've even got any top growth they put out such strong roots that I think we're not going to be able to separate um, from the pots where both have germinated in the ones mum's done I'm just looking at these beans obviously like some of them look really good some of them look a bit on the moldy side which is a bit of a worry but then I did buy you know a half rat eaten bag um, yeah because well I'm sewing them really quite late and it is going to be damp and cold uh, I'm going to be quite careful to plant them in the ground like that. So if you plant them like this, I mean, they germinate perfectly well, but they've got more chance of water resting on top of them and them rotting out before they've actually got going. So planting them like edge on just kind of reduces the risk of that. I'm just going to pick the good ones out of these, actually. Some of them, look at this one. That looks terrible. It's really mouldy. And some of them are broken and a bit old. Hmm, not the best. Okay, beans in. That's all I really came up here to do today. Uh, going out this evening. Uh, so we're actually going to the Shepherd's Bush Empire, which I haven't been to for years. And it's such a pretty little venue. But yeah, so obviously you're coming with me. <laughs> we're going to see Lieback. Excellent. Although same problem as when we went to go and see Ramstein is that you can't, or I can't put their actual music on here because I'll get a content ID claim. So you just have to have the visuals with a bit of random tinkle tinkle over the top. Right, uh, what am I gonna do? I've got to pick some parsley. And what else? Maybe some Cavalanero, feeling like winter stew. Yeah.
molting, girlies? Are you molting, girlies? I think you are. Yeah. What an outrageously beautiful morning. It's bliss. In actual fact, we're going to go back to music and I'm just going to do a bit of like panning around this gloriousness. I'll see you back here in a minute. Pretty magnificent, no? Right, big, big task today. We are recovering the chicken house. I said earlier that it's got a bit, um, I mean, it's not flapping and it's still keeping the majority dry, but it's got holes in it. And if we're gonna have a pants winter, which I suspect we are because we had such an amazing end of October, tends to, in kind of folklore, tends to suggest that we're gonna have a nasty December. <laughs> um, it's better to get it done now so that they're just nice and safe and dry. Uh, first things first though is we've got to rip off the old roof and get the little house out of the big house without the girlies also getting out of the house. <laughs> right, let's go. This chicken house has been through so many incarnations in its relatively short life. <laughs> it was originally made by my dad and it had a big nesting box out the side of the whole cage so that the girlies had to go like up quite high to get into there and then we could access the eggs 
uh, without actually going into the cage, which was amazing. But eventually that rotted out and we bought this little house, which is the one mum and I are struggling to carry out at the moment. And we're probably going to have to replace this little house at some point because it's starting to come apart at the seams. <laughs> it's had some rough treatment. Originally, it didn't have a tarpaulin or a cover over the top, the bit that we're replacing today because they had like an internal house inside, even though they've got one now, it's not quite the same. This used to be quite large. Then this whole rest of this cage was just kind of like their run. So that was totally open to the elements. When we shifted the inside of it around, we had to make it a little bit more covered for them. So they had more protection from the wind and the rain because their little house is really quite tiny in there. It's perfectly big enough for the four tiny bantams. But when it's windy and rainy outside, as it is for about a third of the year, it's nice for them to have a little bit more protection. Anyway, it is this big sheet that's over the top of the cage that we are replacing today. So it's a discussion we have every year as to how far across we should have the tarpaulin. Like, do we have it right on the edge or do we have it further back? Last year, we had it quite a long way back. We had it about a third back. The advantage of having it further back is that they get a nice bit of sunshine in the morning. <laughs> um, we've got two perches right at the front. Well, actually, now we've got four perches at the front, little places for them to sit. And in the winter, when it's mostly grey and rainy, they do get a really good, lovely burst of morning sunshine if it's going to be a sunny day. So we don't like to take that away from them. Obviously, maximum protection is to have it right the way over or across to the edge. But then they just don't get that bit of sunshine and that seems so mean. But I think we're going to go halfway between this edge and where we were last year. Last year, they had quite a lot of rain would kind of come in at a slanty angle and it would hit the frontage of their little den that they actually sleep in. So we don't want that. So we're gonna come about halfway across, which will leave about 30 centimeters on this edge 
give them just enough to have a nice burst of sunshine in the morning. <laughs> I don't know how fussed they are about having sunshine in the morning, but they do all like to sit on this perch, so it just seems nice. And if it was me, I would definitely appreciate it. put on the chicken house. Hey girlies! New roof whirly gigs! I know, I know. Well that is a job I've been meaning to do for such a long time and the couple of days that we've had that have been really nice and sunny it's been quite breezy and obviously flapping a massive tarpaulin around in the wind is never the best. Um, yeah so objective achieved. A couple of things we do still need to do. So we want to put some more wood chips in there for like bark chips for them to scratch around in, but I uh, don't have any of them. Uh, but it is Saturday today and the shop is open tomorrow morning, the shop at the uh, local other allotments. So I think we're going to nip in there in the morning. So we'll be able to kind of finish off this project. Sorry, mum is currently brushing down the chicken house. That's what you can hear in the background. <laughs> But yeah so that's really good i don't know what else we're up here to do today other than just enjoy the fact that we have got a magnificent blue sky although like, the sun's not on our allotment anymore we are like can you see over there over there is uh sunshine that's not our allotment we are in complete shade now oh well else to do.
This one started going to seed, going bolting, you see, so it's got a big stalk up the middle. I am absolutely freezing. Oh, I think it's time to go home. Let's go. Bye, girls. Bye, girlies. Bye, girlies. Bye, girlies. Bye, girlies. Right, I think we deserve a pint to appreciate the last of the sunshine for today.
Right, let's go. Okie dokie, bark chips are got. Let's get them up to the girlies. I'm walking up the drive. Blossom, hello sausage. Hello, are we ready to go in? Yeah, open the gate. Yeah. <laughs> Straight on the beds, Lil. That's what we don't want. Can you not learn to use a path? Hey, yeah, I can't bend down at the moment, darling. I've got a big sack on my shoulder. Ah, there we go. Bit of love, bit of love. Bark chips successfully brought up. Excellent, so I'm just checking the floor so I don't trip. <laughs> right, that's better. Lily Malu, look at those whiskers. Oh, they're so beautiful, they are. Look at those beautiful whiskers. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Now we just got the mulchy one to come. No, we've got we? to do that. Yeah. Clear and mulch beds. Oh, that's going to be a fun one. Yeah. Right. There we go. What were you saying? Right. We left these seeds in here, and I think it's a bit humid. Okay. Yeah. We'll take. So well, we'll take them home. But did you put those? Is this oh, where? there's my gloves. I wondered what I'd done with them. And, and, and is this where you put the new seeds in? Yes. I think they might need a little bit of water. Do you? I stood them in water. They Did obviously you? didn't suck up much. I will um, put some more in there. Some at the top. Yeah, I think they probably do need the water. The other ones don't look like they need it. No, but those ones definitely do. Anything happening with the garlic yet? Nope. One down there. Yeah, we got some peppers that we need to pick off as well, don't yeah. we? Quite a few peppers. On yeah. This one here. I'll check out the greenhouse. I know you were in the polytunnel yesterday, yes. but was there anything that needed picking in there? Were there chilies? Um, there were. I don't know if they needed picking. I mean, there were red ones, but they were, weren't going off or anything. They okay. were just there. Um, they were just there. <laughs> they're just there. They're growing. <laughs> yeah, so peas are germinating. You can see that one has nicely pushed itself out of the compost. I will sort that out. But you can see it's starting to rupture where they're coming through, which is encouraging. It means that also there's been no mice in there taking them, which is good. Nothing showing on the garlic front yet. Although in that far corner, I think we've got a rupture where one's coming up there. Can you see that? Something's coming up there and here. So garlic is go. Are you all right there? Yes, I'm just waiting with the watering can. I've filled it up. <laughs> so to put onto those. Do you want me to do? I have to ask the doctor about my hands. I can't use them anymore. They look just like Mary Berry. <laughs> okay. 
I forgot to water the broad beans, so they were unlikely to germinate quickly, were they? Everything else in here is looking all right, though. Uh, let's go and have a look in the polytunnel. This is the current situation in the polytunnel. The coriander is looking all right, actually. Can you see that's all? It's just dotted amongst the weeds, but you can see that is it in here they look okay and they're all kind of dotted through under here as well which is nice these are just coming it's just slightly orange still so i'll leave them a little bit longer a couple of hot lemons there actually i might take them with beauties black jalapenos are still producing but i don't think that's going to be for much longer and this here is what's supposed to be my Thai orange chili and look something is changing colour if I could just get one of them properly ripe this year I'd be well excited also means I'll be able to save seed for next year because I've grown them two years in a row and not got anything off them <laughs> but that's exciting that's the first time we've even got any kind of colour change so tick on there what else have we got going on in here the uh chard has been eaten can you see in there there's just a little stump that's mighty frustrating but the purple basil is actually looking really good it's looking a lot stronger than the green basil which has all sort of tailed off a bit now still <laughs> st still tomatoes on the sun gold but i think that's just about finished now so I reckon we'll be taking that out next week. Uh, I think it's time to go home, chaps. It's actually just really drizzly and misery up here. Um, after the beautiful day we had yesterday, it all seems a bit flat. I'm gonna head out, close up, put the chickens away, and uh, I'll see you at home. Chilies. Okay, go. Boy, has the temperature dropped, chaps. Mm. I think we might be entering lighting the fire stages in the house. It's absolutely freezing. Anyway, it's been a long video. Although, interestingly, we haven't actually achieved very much. We sowed some broad beans and we put a tarpaulin on top of a cage. <laughs> that is the only things we've achieved this week, but sometimes that happens. I wasn't particularly well in the middle of the week, so I spent one whole day in bed. That took that one out. And it's been a bit, um, it's been a bit piecemeal this week. But next week we have a to-do list again, so hopefully we'll actually get something done. Anyway, cheers chaps, cheers to my Patreons as always. I've actually neglected them a bit this week, so double cheers to the Patreons. Apologies chaps. Also, I haven't even, it is now Sunday evening and I haven't even got round to answering the comments from last week's video. I do not know what happened to this week. I just don't know. Okay, so one day was out when I was ill. What happened to the rest of it? I have no idea. I have no idea. Didn't get any further with the shower either. Yeah, it's just been a complete, it's just been a complete mystery of a week. Um, so <laughs> it's Monday again tomorrow. I'll try and refocus and try and actually achieve something next week. Anyway, yes, it was cheers to patrons who I've been neglecting. 
and uh, cheers to everyone else. I hope you've got your central heating on a bit warmer than we have. Cheers, chaps. Mm. I feel a bit like this should be mulled wine, not an ice cold glass of wine. <laughs>